Where the coughing people are. This is Legends of the Drowned Isles, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion, a 5th ed D&D uh, uh, homebrew campaign. I had to remember it from what there. This is set in the world of Omisha, strange little world made up of 55 islands, 55 with an asterisk, with a footnote that people don't really know yet. Um, although they, I guess the island of Athlon is known of, just nobody knows where it is. Uh, I'm Mark Dean Caffinated, one the GM host and uh, uh, person behind the, the, the shenanigans of Omesha. But I'm also joined by my players, starting on my left with Pat. Hi, right, my name is Pat, and I'm playing Silas Marsh. Hello, my name is Marie, and I'm playing Annie. Uh, I am also the coughing one. Well, and I'm next, and I'm playing Medrick, half orc cleric. And uh, coughing is a new specialty gained uh, in rogues where they can cough mm -hmm. and still not be seen. <laughs> I'm going to switch this over to the map because we are still in the midst of a conflict of some kind off in the another plane altogether on the edge of the far plains where... Uh, I should probably open World 20. Greedy and, uh, greedy and uh, malicious entities wish to invade from their beyondness including some that may not be so greedy or malicious, as uh, Silas Marsh also knows that somewhere beyond the barrier right now faced the edge of the far realm, somewhere deeper within lies what is sometimes referred to as Zagwatha, or in the, the vernacular of the Marsh clan, the mother. Uh, but right now, what you've recently been able to achieve is trying to reset this great ancient Argenti Sagax machine. Uh, the machine of transmutation, it seems, which took the trapped, there are a lot of question marks in these particular statements, the trapped figure of Valenti from within the machine to become now within what looks like a different machine. This one, a uh, giant fighting metallic being recently constructed, it seems, uh, by some other part of the facility out of some spare parts you'd seen lying around earlier. Why all this is happening? Well, you've been researching and following through, trying to find and follow the trail of the Argenti Sagax, as well as the trail of any remnants of the ancient god Paluxia recently removed from the world, and whose removal has caused ripples of concern, let's say, uh, to certain uh, members of the uh, of the of mysterious groups in Omesha on the trail for Tassar in this particular case, but having come to the uh, the uh, what is this, the Chamber of Resonance or the I got to find my own notes here they're all a little squished there we go. Um, but having found yourself here, the Sanctum of Resonance, I knew it was something like that, uh, and having freed recently uh, Valenti, you still see outside the efforts of this shadowy creature trying to invade. Uh, right now, uh, Valenti in the armor stands before the, the destroyed door and gestures to you all. Um, the voice of Valenti coming now, not from within the general area of this sanctum, as it had seemed to come before, but now seeming to resonate um, from within the metallic body. Abandon this place. I could hold them off for a moment or two, but you'll have to get to the other side. We will not defeat them today, but... Maybe in sacrificing this place, I can keep them from going deeper. Are you ready to run? I'm always ready to run. I'm wondering run what you mean by going deeper. But... Yes. 
Uh, as ready as I can be. And are you coming with us? I'll hold them back. And if I should survive that, I'll be right behind you. If you have ways or means, by all means, employ those. And I will do what I'll I I'll just do a quick prayer to Ignis and give her guidance at the same time. <laughs> okay. Ignis blesses you. Okay. Uh, has guidance for the next minute or she so. She screams out as she burns. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I will also thank her and say good luck. Okay. And give her um, my bonus action uh, long distance aid. Can we get a little more specific than uh, thank you and good luck? <laughs> what tactics would prayers. she, uh, would she uh, employ to try to base it maybe on what she's seen or? Um, I don't know exactly what she's going to do to try to, to stop them. So it's hard for me to know what she's able to do to do that, right? Okay. But so from Annie's it's... perspective, is there something that she would say as advice? Um, based on maybe the lightning, the strange psychic lightning that seems to emerge, or? Um, go for the face. <laughs> okay, go for the face. All right. Uh, sure. That does that does tend to, to, to work. <laughs> it's true, it's true. You're not sure whether the, the great miasmic force on the edge of reality has a face, but certainly uh, it, 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 it evokes a, 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 an assured chuckle from Valenti. In this form, Valenti does not seem to have hands as such. Uh, I should describe the armor in a bit more depth. It does appear to be bulky. It does stand tall, however, um, almost nine feet tall in this particular configuration. Uh, it's smooth armor for the most part, but it does look like it was recently constructed. It looks as though some of the pieces were just recently connected together. Uh, there are seams, but they don't seem to, to lead into much depth. Across uh, the entire body are numerous small glowing portals that seem to show um, a little bit of, of an energetic reaction that changes from time to time. Um, in the uh, vernacular of our current world situation, it's a little bit like Christmas tree lights, strangely enough. Not arrayed in the same sort of fashion, but uh, small lights that seem to glow and then ebb and then glow again. Um over all of the body. The head itself has one of these, which would be about the location of the forehead, fairly large as well. Both arms are covered in what look like large, uh, heavy, almost mauls, uh, no fingers to speak of, but large mauls that seem to uh, 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 be intended for bashing, to be very, very blunt about it all. Um, and you also recall that the the placement of where these portals of light are on the body is pretty close, if not the same, as the placement you had seen of the small gems embedded in the body of Valenti within the machine itself. Um, with all of your assurances, um, uh, she uh, actually all of you can make an insight check uh, as well. Just to start uh a little. Silas summons a beholder kin and tells it to assist her. Okay. With his last warlock slot. Uh, let me see if I have a... I forget what I have for inside. A little beholder kin. Oh, okay. I'm definitely insightful on this character. Unless I roll a one. I, I just fucking jinxed it. <laughs> okay, we got this. Nothing can possibly go wrong. A little spectator there, I will. You still got the best insight of us. <laughs> yeah, when I don't roll ones. <laughs> All right. No, even with the one, you still beat us. I wow. rolled a seven, he rolled a nine, you rolled a ten. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's um, interesting. Okay. Uh, wow, really? That's remarkable. Um, I didn't We're not a very insightful group. I mean, it's not really about the, the, the bonuses so much as that just the roles just happen to be abysmal, <laughs> pretty rough, unfortunately. Um, I put a little spectator on the map there, uh, uh, Pat, so that Silas should be able to control that thing. And you can tell it where to go if you want to, or you can keep it with you. How long does a creature like that last? Is it an hour or something like that? 
Oh, you're muted, unfortunately. Yeah, I think it's an hour. It's concentration as well. So okay. uh, it's got 50 hit points, and it, he's just telling it to stick by her and guard her. Okay. Uh, and it will do and the, so. the, the flaming hammer only has like one or two rounds left, but I'll place it here. I know I can't control it from far away, but it's like hopefully it'll like dissuade any attackers from going near. Okay. Um, from the inside. It'll make it think. Yeah. From the inside checks, I think Medric had the highest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, out of 10. Um, from a natural one, yeah. <laughs> from a natural one. Yeah. Well, thankfully on, on skill checks, the natural ones don't automatically fail. Good. Um, it's it's when it's when the three of you are, are kind of powering her up a little bit, especially with your your blessing where there is a small burst of flame that sort of circles her for a second. Um, there's an odd reaction, um, but you're not sure what to make of it. Uh, but she does kind of look down on you from this monster large armor uh, and seem to take note of your casting of that spell. Um, that's all, Everything okay? you know, all you're going to get from that. Uh, one more thing. Um, there was a cube outside. I think it's in here now somewhere. Um, yeah, I think Annie had brought it in, but I don't remember what we did with it. Cause then we changed how the puzzles were being done. Um, it was used to replace one of the missing pieces underneath one of the, um, one of the uh, yeah beneath one of the pieces of the puzzle okay we're going to need that can one of you fetch that please I and she holds up her her big club like arms can't really get at it right now I'll, I'll do that okay uh, it will be just a quick dexterity check to avoid any of the issues around it DC 12. So, so don't roll a one. Uh, roll the two instead. Audible blinking. I <laughs> do have an inspiration. I will use it. Okay. <laughs> right. I, I forgot the whole like curse statement. My bad. There we go. Much better. <laughs> okay. That seems much more reasonable. Uh, <laughs> as, you're, as you're kind of working it out, you... Maybe you do that sort of thing where you're like, okay, in your head, you work out all the steps and it's sort of like uh, lean, shift, shove hand in, bang. Remember, remember I have the boomerang and kind of hold that, use that to leverage. Yeah, there you go. And it does pop off. The The energy that was flowing through that particular receptacle seems to come uh, to a halt uh, and then starts to spark up as you see the other parts start to um, sort of work with the energy that was formerly in that space. Uh, and there is a bit of a loud whine that's coming from the whole kit and caboodle, as if energy is building now. Um, I'll bring it over to her. Hold on to it. Okay. And do I have Valenti? I don't have Valenti in the order, but I will... Oops. Add a turn for that. And too many forms. All right. Uh, pardon me, I'm just trying to... Search things a little bit, and I am utterly failing. Oh, pardon me. So, uh, as you get ready, and you've gotten in position, she steps and turns around, and you can see that um, 
behind where she was. She basically occupied the space of the door for that period of time. Uh, and oh, come on. Ah. Uh. Just one simple rule. All right. Um, beyond her, you can see one of those massive uh, creatures, sort of shadow uh, creatures that was been daunting you. And um, when she turns around, you can see that her back has been scratched up. She didn't seem to react at all to being attacked by the thing. Um, and now she will charge at it. Um, I, it's, it's still going to be double, um, because I happen to have two, uh, instances of roll 20 open. We discovered what the problem was last time. Uh, I will be using the ones that say Mark GM. I don't know if you, s yeah, you should see both those. That just makes it easier for me to pick which one's a first. Uh, in this you, case. You could also, um, go into your camera one and whisk, set it to whisper. Uh, I, but all of my roles will be whispers then, wouldn't they? Oh, fair. Yeah, because I only have one instance of the roll 20 up, or of beyond oh. 20. And it's sending out to both instances of roll 20. Uh, if, oh. uh, it's a good idea. I don't know if uh, there's a solution necessarily, but I think just picking one now works. It is a fair. formidable uh, strike. As she slams at it once and then probably again. Yep. And does. Wow, that's weird. Uh, doesn't destroy it, but sends it reeling. Uh, and then just moves beyond it to. Uh, move out into the darkness. It will take an attack as she passes by. Uh, or try to snap at it, at her, but it just bounces off. Oh wait, no, 22, that's a hit. Uh, all right, just trying to get back into the flow of things, pardon me, folks. But its attention is now fully focused on her. So let's skip this through. So we need to run where? So the only way you knew to come in was way up at the top um, is where you came out into the building, down a set of stairs, and across the courtyard. You do know that there are things in the courtyard itself which are going to be preying on people. You also know that there was a tower here which formerly held that cube and that may be something you can uh, get engaged with you although she did want you to bring the cube with you eventually it does have additional abilities uh, as well as uh, you know that there's a, a, a sort of opening back here but you don't know where it goes to she seems to be heading at least in the same direction as where you came from before okay but Annie you are I... up first I'm up. Yep. Um, I am going to, as zoom zoom me, uh, where is this? Um, what's my speed? I'm going here, 30 feet. I'm going to bonus action dash. Okay. I'm going to take a look down this corridor here to see what is down there. Okay. It seems to lead into a tunnel into the rock and then further deeper into the rock beyond the turn. You can't really see beyond that, that point. Um, oops. So you can see where it kind of bends and you can see there is carved stone there. As there's a tunnel, but you don't see any further than that. Okay. 
Um, you do remember um, that within the rest of the compound, you'd mm -hmm. stayed pretty much at the same level until you went downstairs to get out. So unless there's stairs upward, this does not necessarily lead in the, in the right direction. Okay. But for right now, so, you can't really tell. Um, I'm going to action dash there then. Okay. And you can make out not only uh, the one that was there before, but another one of these things has been formed on the horizon. Uh, and beyond that, you can see What's represented as a singular point here, but it should be understood to be essentially a large cloud of shadowy tendril-like energy. I will have you make a wisdom saving throw, now seeing it clearly and up close. Oh. Not great. That is a nine. So, before seeing it... You take, well, well, only one point of psychic damage because I guess it's already been impacted so many times so far. Uh, however, you are um, frightened. Now, with frightened... Is this damage, a new thing we're seeing? It's not... Well, it's now come close and it's now on the edge. You'd seen it at a distance before. Because we did make saves against it before. Against its aura, yes. Uh, but now actually seeing it, it's another save. Okay. Um, however, that does mean you're frightened. One of the problems of the frightened condition is you can't move closer to the thing that frightened you unless you have some other mitigating circumstance. Great. I will go explore the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is, that's all of your turn, I believe. Yep. So we are at, oh, I see that my list is not in sync with the other. Pardon me. There we go. Dudek's turn, without any particular guidance, uh, he will move on through. I thought I had him open here. Huh. I don't have uh, Dudek's sheet open. All right. Dudek's move, well, I guess his move would be pretty much standard. Oh, he's a little faster than standard. Uh, and he will uh, much the same move on through. He will also dash and get a little further than you. So has a little bit more movement. Gets to there, but also has to make the save basically it's head head down runs along and also suffers from that shock of whatever the hell this thing is Ooh, takes a lot more psychic damage though uh, and you can see up ahead of you um, Annie that he is frozen um, just you know why you see this thing this mesmerizing void that somehow both has substance and none, which somehow seems to um, exude a sort of menace. The sense is that you would, if you got any closer to it at all, you would feel your skin pulling off like a form of terrible gravity. And now you can see the dudex suffers the same. Yeah. Um, however, where does he have that yet? Uh, he does not. Okay. I think he's... I think he's done. Yeah, I think he's done. Uh, that brings us up to Medric. All right. Too many window. Where did he go? Oh, damn it. I feel your pain. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's my... Uh... 56 emotional support tabs. Yeah. I have eight windows open in front of me. Oof. All right. 
So are we going down the tunnel or around where the building is or the, the way we came in? You saw Annie briefly explore the tunnel, then come back out and then freeze. You saw Dudek run straight over and then freeze. And you can kind of feel in the edge of your perception this creature has gotten a lot closer. Um, when you first moved through here, I think as well, uh, the barrier Yeah, I remember that, yeah. And the barrier is not up any, any longer. So I don't want to look at this thing at all because it terrified me the first time. Do I have any... If I close my eyes, can I run through, like, or at least walk through? No. But then if, if anybody's hurt, then I can't help them. A very smart idea. <laughs> As someone with blind sight and a vague knowledge of where things are. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a peek outside. Okay. You can see it, or you can feel okay. its presence more than see it at this point. I mean, like, peek, uh, peek outside to, like, just try to make, like, a, qu a quick mental map of where everything is. Okay. That was two steps. And if I close my eyes, pray to Ignis, give myself guidance. And walk out. Uh, like, is do guidance I count it as concentration, by the way? I don't think so. Let me double check. I'm not sure myself. It's been a while. Guidance is concentration. Okay. Okay. So it would, it would fade from, uh, oh, right. from her because it's still technically on her, but she hasn't used it yet. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it on her then. It's up to you. I mean, it's okay. dangerous stuff, so you're welcome to try. Everything is dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so I took two steps already, or two squares. I'll walk out with my eyes closed. Okay. Uh, make for me a survival check, please. Twelve. Twelve, okay. Um, how many steps were you planning to go? Let's do this in terms of the squares. So uh, full, full movement. So Although, how much, wait, how no. much movement do you have left? Four squares. Okay. Um, every other square, roll me a, uh, a D10. So make them make a normal one and then roll me a D10. Okay. So the, first, the first one is four. Okay. So I'm going to, where was your first normal step? Probably I here. was here at the beginning, and then it's like nope. here, here. I, no, yeah, from, I started off from, from here. there. Is where you're gonna start. Where you were. So I, make... I was here where I am now. Okay, so make one normal step, and then you rolled a four. Mm -hmm. So one, two, three, four. Okay, now make a normal step as you would have, which would have been straight ahead, or well, back to where I started because I'm not even out of the tower yet. No, nope, you don't see because your eyes are closed. But surely I'd notice if I bump against the wall, right? Well, you do when you take that third step. Okay. And now you can either open your eyes, realizing you're still in the tower, and take your last step. I'll take one more step, and then I roll a six. Uh, well, you've only got four steps, right? So that'll be the last step. Was, wasn't that just two? So you you took one step forward, one step back, one step tried to go into the wall, if you open your eyes at that point, you can step there, and then we'll make a D6. Actually, make it a D4. I'm just completely lost right now. Well, the, pro the problem is, so basically I'm simulating the fact that your mental map is not really all that great. So half of your steps are potentially in the wrong direction. So every other step, you're making a random roll to see which direction you're going in. Unfortunately, the first one, you end up walking backward. Three? Okay. Um, I'll put you here as you kind of walk and you feel yourself stumble into the shadow being. Fortunately, he has no reactions whatsoever, so 
but you know that you're right beside that being that's there. Okay. So this is probably like the dumbest possible move I could have made. <laughs> not necessarily. Um, not seeing it is definitely helping you right now, but you also have foes right next to you. So you do have your action left. That was just your move. And a free action to go, okay, I think I know where everything is. So I feel something standing next to me? Yep. You basically ran into it. So if you do want to attack it, it would be a disadvantage to attack, but you could try. I'm just going to stand defensive. Okay, so a um, dodge action then? Yeah. Okay. Because I figure like I have no magic attacks, the hammer's in the other room. Fair enough. And it's probably resistant to whatever I'm going to throw at it anyway. No, not necessarily. Uh, those don't have any movement. Gosh is going... Oh, I didn't look one of those up either. I thought I had everything set up, but I do not. Pardon me. Uh, I need another page. All right. Uh, and I'm blanking. Oh. Um. <laughs> What is gosh? Why am I blanking on that? Nothing. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Look at me remembering things. Yay. Very good job. All right. And his move is that. So he is going to go there. Skip on by you. Uh, run across to the other side. See Annie there. Take his action. Ends up standing right next to Annie. And then realizes too late his mistake. Uh, makes a 14, which is... Oh, sorry. The first one was a 1. So he fails as well. As it is now a chorus line. Ooh. Uh, yeah, he goes down from the psychic overload. Oh no! As right behind also, guys, you... we've made it as a streamer. We have our first spam bot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't been watching that. I probably should take a closer look at that. At I, I just opened it. <laughs> oh no! We have someone offering us a Here, promotion for our channel. Agony. Oh wow! <laughs> Try to get rid of. Oh, look at that. Get rid of. We've made it as streamers, guys. Oh, I'm hearing myself. Uh, <laughs> all right. What can I do here? Uh, I've never had to deal with this, so I have no idea what to do. Manage suspicious user. All right. That's not what I wanted. Sorry. Um, I usually have it open, but then just remember that I didn't. <laughs> Sorry. All right. There, it's been blocked. Probably more I need to do here, but that's all right. Um, too many windows there. Uh, yeah, that was distracting. Um, so was Gosh. Uh, you kind of hear Gosh kind of, uh, you were familiar with his gait at this point across this sort of stony ground. Uh, and he comes screeching to a halt right beside you. And then you kind of hear the body uh, uh, hit the ground as his one big eye took one big eyeful 
and uh, it seemed to have overwhelmed him even more so than yourself. Um, gosh, gosh, by gosh, Silas. Okay, one, two, three, four, is Medrick difficult terrain? Um, I'll say no, you can move through the allies space. He's definitely, okay. he's got his eyes closed at the moment, and it is being careful, but I suspect that you can say something like, don't kill me, Medric, and he'll know it's Silas rather than the other creature, so he wouldn't attack you. I'm assuming. Uh, maybe I'm assuming too much. Is Silas not saying anything or seeing On your well? left. There you go. On <laughs> your left. It works. Yeah. Do I roll against a thing? Not from there. Okay. Uh, then, let's see. Yeah. Oh, if you can use that. Uh, he's going to spit venom at the shadow thing. Okay. Uh, which one? The one that's right beside uh, Medrick right yeah. there? Okay. Uh, oh, he's... it's a dodge. Okay. Oh, I I guess so. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. That one, uh, what's the issue? 15, it is a constitution save. Okay. Mm, super crapped out on damage, but oh well. Uh, that is a four, so it failed. Sweet. So indeed, uh, yep. Six it's not, poison. It's not immune to poison. Oh, wait, I think I had the wrong stat. Sorry, he is not dead. I had the wrong stat. So... He does kind of, uh, Gosh does kind of stumble a bit, but manages to pop up from being down. <laughs> um, damage was six, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, and as the uh, spitting of, is it poison or acid? Poison. Okay. As it kind of lands across this, this being, you see um, that its form is not exactly solid, but the, the acid kind of mixes in and you see this greenish tinge flowing through it and causing its its form to shimmer. Um yeah, I don't think I've got any bonus actions. So next uh Mr. Beholder Ken comes out non de bluff. And will oh actually how fast can you fly is that? Probably sixty I imagine. How many? Nope, 30, but he can hover. Okay. So that was... Yeah, I'll just say he stops there anyways. Um, and he's going to blast the shadow. Okay. Um, let's see. That is... A spell level. Is it the 8 plus... Eight, uh, no, that's the damage. Seven. So that's two eye ray attacks with a plus seven. Nice. Um, that's a 15 to hit on the first one and an 18. You broke up a bit second there, one. both hit. Okay. Uh, kind of... Damage for each is D8 plus eight. Okay. Oh, D8 plus 8? Yes. Wow, okay. Yeah, it's it's down. <laughs> it's a guaranteed uh, uh, down at that point. Hey, that's 22 uh, psychic damage is what it took. Okay. Yeah, it, the eye rays go out and it just rips it in two. And, and not physically, it's kind of like it. the, the eye beams go through it and there's a an implosion effect as... Um, as if all of the manifestation tries to push into the holes that were cut through it. Uh, but then there's a kind of psychic scream uh, emitted as it, as it per perishes. Very well done. Sweet. Keep forgetting you have these tanks you can bring out. Well, not tanks uh, so much as you know, tank, missiles. But yeah, the, the beholder can is sweet. Yeah. 
Where was he earlier? Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, that is your turn. Yep, I'm done. Okay. Um, the other one is now uh, fully butted off. And probably go after the, the biggest threat on the horizon, actually. Head straight for the, the hulking giant. First with an attempted bite, which does hit. And claw. And, well, it gets two claw attacks. I'll just take those both. It's easier. So that first one hits, second one hits, and third one hits. Three solid hits. All right. Uh, as the, the creature is being, oh, there's saves too. Forgot about that. Okay. Uh, that does not affect her. But the the hits do. So we did that one, that one, and that one. And you can see now there's there's holes being poked through the armor, but. There's a ripple of light across the armor as it looks as though it is um, building up to something. And what it's going to build up to... Uh, shoot, I don't have that list listed there, but I'll have to... Yeah, this is the problem with modding things. I have to roll them manually. Um, Valenti... Um, with all of the little portals starting to gather light, sort of leaps forward and sma smashes both feet, or both arms rather, into the ground nearby her. Um, there's a wash of radiant energy. Uh, and let's see, first of all, uh, everyone within 30 feet, which I think at this point is everyone. Uh, yes. Um, everyone yep. within 30 feet gets, well, one hit point back. That part wasn't quite as spectacular. Um, yeah, any, every little bit helps. Every little bit helps, especially right now. So, hey, will, Gosh gets an extra hit point. That's important. Go, gosh gets <laughs> 19. The, that would be the one vital hit point that's necessary. Uh, and actually, um, I realize I've been using the wrong ones for those. Okay. Uh, and, uh, um, uh, Dudek also seems similarly refined. Um, immediately, uh, Dudek, Annie, and Gosh get to make a new wisdom saving throw with advantage against the fright, against the fear. Um, that is a 19 for... Double digits, Annie, double digits. 17 mm -hmm. for, uh, for Gosh. Oh, yeah, Dudek's on the other thing. Show me Dudek. And Dudek uh, succeeds spectacularly. Okay. You are now no longer frightened, and you are immune to the frightened condition of that creature. And that's Big Buddy, right? And that's, that's the big one, yes. This guy. So you feel yourself emboldened. Visually, what you get as this light kind of maps out um, is it almost looks as though a, all of the lights scan across the ground in your surroundings and there's a certainty to it. Um, an almost a, a, a calculation of what everything is. And even the creature, which had once and then frighteningly seemed to be amorphous, constantly changing uh, a, a wall of menace there's sort of an overlay that appears for a second where things are calculated and noted. Um, features are pointed out and normalized somehow. And you get the sense in a way that this may be how she sees them. Not as a creature, 
of, of daunting and unknowable nature, but one that can be known and one which she's encountered before. Still threatening, it's still massive, and you can see as the light lights up that this forward creature is nothing more than the end of one tentacle of a massive creature a few hundred feet away. This is, for want of a better term, one finger of the creature. Somehow at the moment, though, that does not frighten you. Maybe it should. Uh, that is the end of their turn. Uh, Annie, you're up. I'm going to ask, is there a way out down that tunnel? Um, you hear Valenti's response. No, it goes deeper in. More research areas. Therefore not worth it. Um, I'm going to... Dead end. Um, perfect. How big is Gosh? Gosh is, well, counts as a medium creature, but is pretty thin and spindly. Maybe a, okay. you know, 60 pounds soaking wet kind of thing. Okay. I would like to use my 90 feet of full movement, but I'd like to pick up Gosh. So okay. I would be moving at half movement. Okay. So 45. Feet. What's your strength? 12. Oh, yeah. Surprisingly enough, he will slow you down, but you can pick him up. You seem somewhat surprised by the skin to skin contact. Um, and. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to. Squeeze, squeeze by do deck. Okay. Moving and... through an ally's base is not so bad right now. Yep. Uh, and get inside. Okay. With gosh. You pop in through the door. You see another one of those ghostly specters. Kind of oh, hanging out right there. Um, I will have you make an insight check as well. I know we aren't the most insight of, of groups, but. All good. Might roll well. Look at me. There Double digits again. Uh, Gosh is not resisting you, um, but the eye is swiveling up and looking at you. And you notice that the eye regards you with considerable amount of suspicion, considerable amount of, of curiosity, and the eye narrows as if trying to look closer at you. Um, I can open my mind to communicate to let specific creatures in. I'll, I'll let Gosh in. I've, we've been through enough. He's almost dead. <laughs> okay. Um, you feel that there's sort of a psychic pressure wave that happens as soon as you do that. And the full gaze of this creature looks upon you. And you get this weird feeling like you are a screen and he is a light and so this the the light moves through slightly and mostly around you outlining your being and this strange sort of look um and there's just a a, a mental a moment of mental awe um and the one line that that gosh is able to say in this instant is you are not who you are. And that's it. Um, that is... He got to snap his neck now. Uh, <laughs> he's never been more vulnerable. Uh, Dudek also similarly will run in. And then as soon as he gets to there, sees the creature, uh, moves over there. Uh, and does something you haven't seen him do before. He clasps his hands together and opens them slightly in front of him. And in between his hands, you see the sort of ghostly outline of a spell book. Or at least a book, anyway. You're not sure if it's spells or not. It's hard to tell from this angle. Um, he draws back... I wouldn't know the difference anyway. Fair enough. <laughs> um, he draws back uh, and strikes he's still 10 feet away but uh golden uh ga golden ghostly arms stretch out from his um from his own arms and strike at the creature um he does not seem to hit but he well, actually i got to check on that he might hit there pretty weak 
Uh, he... Actually, yeah, he hits both times. I was reading that wrong. As you see, his his uh, these ghostly extensions of his own and own hands uh, reach out and kind of slap at this creature. Um, pretty solidly, actually, from that distance. Uh, and the creature is uh, a semi-humanoid, but it was kind of watching as everyone came in and then kind of turns all of its attention on him with this look that if it had had a human fo- face would be sheer astonishment uh, because it, it is almost as though he literally reached out and slapped its soul. Uh, boxing souls. Uh, Medric, you're up. I'm feeling very few presences near me, so I'm assuming I, I don't. I, I don't want to get left behind. So um, you do feel much more comfortable after that. Whatever it was wave pas- passed over you. Um, you did not see. Uh, actually, I suppose Annie had her. Her no, Annie did not have her eyes closed. So uh, Medric did not see the the digitization of the landscape, but um, you did get a reassuring feeling, uh, as though. Help is here and on the way. All right. Well, I'm going to open my eyes because I'm never going to make it if I keep my eyes closed. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. And Mind I will... would have been a solution to that, but that's that's other solutions mm-hmm. for themselves. I mean, solutions that I have but never think of. Yep. <laughs> um, so, Medric. You can see now that the the large creature, while dangerous, and there's a sense of it being even larger, mm-hmm. is manageable somehow. It's chaotic, but no worse than fog or rain. All right. So I will make my way to where the others are. One. Hey. Can I sprint? Uh, you can use your action to sprint, yeah. And Silas, are you going to be okay? Who knows? <laughs> As in, do you need... Run for it. Okay. Where's the... Freaking... Where's... How do I do the arrow again? Um, how do Q. you measure? Uh, Q when yeah. you're moving. So start so moving. So hold, yeah. your, hold okay. your dude and, and press Q. Oops. There you go. And then you can do Q for each each move, for each corner corner you want to move, that sort of oh, thing. Fuck. Oh, how do I fuck this up? So click and hold, and then move, hit Q and hold Q, and then tap Q each time you want to turn, essentially. Yeah, but it's it's doing like a zigzaggy thing. No. Woo. <laughs> I think you must be tapping Q multiple times. I'll just count. Hopefully, I, I hopefully I can count to twelve without fucking it. One, two, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Run away. Okay, I've moved. Okay. There's some sort of residue of the of the trip there. I'm not sure what that's all about, but that's all right. Now oh, that was me like completely messing it up. Well, they've added something now, so it's a little bit different. I'm not sure how to. What? Okay, because I see it on the uh, on the stream, but I don't see it on the actual. You don't map. see it on yours? Okay. No. It it might. I be... just refreshed my page, and it it went away. It went away. Okay. I'll just refresh that real quick. Um. find the map again Whoop. we adventures in trying to navigate <laughs> <laughs> all right there we go um oh, did i lose one of my eyes <laughs> all right there he is there. try to get the eye in the area now i gotta reload my own too because it's i still see the five on my other version all right that's not important uh, so Medric manages to run all the way in, and again, you see 
Um, oh, its radius is really small. Um, oh, where did you go? Okay, so you're right on the outside, but the door is open, so you can see that there's a specter of some kind there as well. Okay. Um, likely it was spawned before and then was only recently discovered. That was you sprinting, so that was your move and bonus act or bon move and action. Um, you still yeah. have a bonus action. I think your uh... yeah, the spiritual weapon is gone now. Oh, it's gone now. Okay. Oh, because it's con concentration too, right? No, it isn't, but it's it only lasts for ten rounds. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. All right. Uh, it is. Oops. It took me out of GM mode when I reloaded. All the little things. Sorry, I shouldn't keep describing them. Uh, it is the Spectre's turn. And the Spectre sees all of you coming in. Plethora of attackers. But it will go after... Um... Sorry, can you hear me? I, I keep turning away from the microphone. Uh, yep. It will go after Dudek, because Dudek was the one to try to go after it. So... Uh, an eight does not hit, however. Uh, and it only has the one attack. Uh, there's none of those in op operation. There's Gosh. Uh, Gosh will... I think he's already tried to do that and realized that does not work. So Gosh will move up to it and try to attack. Oh, actually, sorry, it's right there. Uh, a six does not hit. It'd be two attacks. We'll take the eight. The eight does not hit. People are not having it's it's a it's a one of those arm flailing contests at this point, <laughs> uh, where nobody's having a lot of luck. Silas, everyone else has left except for Valenti. Okay. Well, let's see. One, two, three. Puts me there. Do I have to make a thingy? Nope, you were within radius. Or sorry, you do, but you get advantage. Okay. Because you're within the radius of the effect of Valenti's. And what is it? Wisdom? It is a wisdom save. Okay. 16. 16 is enough. And that also renders you immune to its effect from now on. Six. Um. Um. Yeah, I think Silas is going to... Use his action to move as well. Okay. Now. Uh, my be beholder kin friend is going to move down this way. Let's move that eye over so I can see. And blast the shadow. Okay. Um, Plus seven to hit. The 26 in the first one. Oh, yeah. And the 22 in the second one. Absolutely. And D8 plus eight psychic. That's 13 psychic and 14 psychic. Nice. Go behold again. Um, unlike the other one, this one has not been wounded, so it it's, uh, is shredded slightly and does take note of it, but still quite substantial. Um, beside it, uh, Valenti does look somewhat uh, wounded. New York. Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Now, a question for it. Does it want to go after the one that really damaged it or the big target? Uh, given what Valenti just did, actually, it's going to go after the Beholderkin. Um, first, no problem. First strike is only a nine. Second strike is a 10. Third strike is a 12. Wow, that's a plus seven attack. And, <laughs> uh, and those are very, very bad rolls. All right. Well, yeah, it's, it's got a 16. It's, so it's, it's okay. occupied. It's all good. We're all rolling bad. It, 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 yep. it would have missed Valenti, actually, oddly enough, uh, if it tried as well. But it didn't. It tried to go after the really big zappy Ray. It's all right, Ray. Um <laughs> That is that thing's turn. There's only one of them at the moment. Oh, I should say there's only one of them at the moment. 
but um, you would notice that another one is um, spawning. Uh, Silas does yell to the beholder, can you do the mother proud? <laughs> a, yeah, he says it in aberrant. Yeah, it just slobber and yells. It doesn't really have a lot of language to it. Um, Annie, you're up. You see one of these uh, things kind of going after Dudek. You do Perfect. know these things are quite painful if they do hit. I will also um, then go here and stab it with vice. Okay. It is missing. Well, no, you're not below half. It is missing some of its hit, hit, hit points. So it gets. Oh! <laughs> And that's a nat 20. Nice. Hey. So, Ooh, this um, is going to be a lot of calculation. Okay. Minus three. So, total of 37. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that utterly uh, shreds it into pieces. Please describe to me how this epic hit happens. Ooh, I, I, I stab it in the back of the skull. <laughs> Like, <laughs> okay, it's one of those innocuous looking hits until it sort of starts to unravel from that one spot. Uh, <laughs> Vice glows in response, um, and you almost get this impression that Vice is judgmental in this moment, and it has judged its existence to be not worthy of having. I mean, it's the truth. Fair. <laughs> Um, that is Anik's epic attack, and he still has some movement left, as well as, I um, think, more to do if you want to. Uh, I am going to go back here, uh, and I am going to... I just want to see the wording of something. Give me a second. Master of Tactics, you can want to use the help action... Uh, in an allied attacking creature, the target of that attack can be within 30 feet of you. Okay, so I am going to... Valenti seemed to be attacked. Was she attacking the big guy? No. No? Okay. She wasn't actually attacking anything so... out there. She attacked the one that was back before and okay. then ran and then did that that saving throw retry business okay protection from fear okay then i'm going to just basically go here and keep an eye on what's going on out there okay uh dudex going to move from where he is and kind of take a scout around there i don't see anything here so far Medric. All right, I will continue to go in. Oh, right, wrong mode. Okay. Inspector said, "Okay, um, right, back to the way we came." Silas, do you, do you need help? Uh, oh, I'm probably okay for now. Okay. Let's just keep running. Run away. I'll go a little slower now that I can't see that creepy thing outside. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm the person with the most hit points currently because uh, I've been staying back and also um, the person who can run the fastest. So I'm going to keep the rear and just kind of usher people. Sounds good. Okay. I'm wondering whether I should like sprint. No, I'll stay. So you're done. I'll stay within sight of people and just in case somebody needs healing. Okay. So right now I'll just stand defensive just in case. All right. Uh, let me see here. And emerging from the wall in front, you see another one of those creatures, a shadowy specter. You get the feeling this place might be. Lousy with them. Fun yeah. times. But it can't really, well, yeah, it can't really reach anybody, and it's also seeing so many people. 
Um, Gosh, emboldened by the uh, the crazy fighting spirit of one Annie, and also kind of looking over its shoulder at Annie, again with this look of almost wonder, uh, charges forward and will attack. Um, he has not been that lucky on any attack so far. And today is not going to be that day where that gets much better, although the first one does land, which is good. Uh, but it does mostly go through it, which is bad. Uh, and I think he's going to scamper backward <laughs> afterwards <laughs> because uh, he's not really fit to stand toe-to-toe -to, -toe to them. Uh, the other thing does get an attack of opportunity, however. It's not the full um, life drain. It's just a, ooh. It's just a strike, but it is a crit. So as uh, Gosh bravely scampers up, he's then struck down from the, uh, the creature. Rip. So once more, he's close to death. I won't put him, I'll just put the red dot there for now. As he is not he is doing the named character, he gets death saves. He does, <laughs> he does. He's already been doing death saves, I think, during this combat too. Silas, you're up. Hey. Well. Hmm. Yeah, Silas is just gonna head up and uh, run in behind Medric. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he'll dash. There's up there. Okay. Leave the specter alone. Oh, yeah. So I, I forget. I didn't realize it was still there somehow. A new one just came through the wall. Yeah. Sorry, I, I meant to describe that, and I just moved the, the token through the wall. But mm -hmm. it literally just came through the wall from inner, oh, in, deeper uh, in. Probably where the six. hallway was. Uh, now, there's not really much he can do. Uh Three, four, five, six. Yeah, he'll go up behind Dudek. Okay. And then Beholderkin will move away. So the shadow creature gets a hack of opportunity. That's only a, oh, that's a 21 to hit. Okay, so that's a hit. Uh, 13 necrotic. Okay. Oh, come on. Minus 13. There we go. Uh, and then uh, he will blast it. A 25 and a 21. <laughs> Absolutely. The 9 psychic. And 15 Psychic, so 24 Psychic. Nice. All right, it's looking a lot more shredded and, and less coherent. Oh, sorry, and I meant to actually move him further away. I just moved him five feet. Okay. See if we can get... uh, yeah, he would go back here. Okay. Yeah, try and split up the shadows. It should have been done before your turn, but it won't affect that too much. Uh, that does return. Uh, and the walls will protect you guys, but not protect either of them. So, um, once more, there is the dark lightning lashing out from the, from the, the creature, the wall, covering all the area. Annie, you kind of are tucked just behind the wall as you see some of it sort of lash through the open doorway right beside you. Uh, however, in the field, I will have um, both uh, Valenti, which I'll actually name properly here. Let's do the name of Valenti. Uh, and we'll show it. 
uh, and the um, eye being will have to make dexterity saving throws. And for simplicity's sake. Nine. And five. Both fail. Uh, this could be very, very bad. Let's see what the 68 turns up to be. 28 points of necrotic damage. Uh, and uh, resistant, so 14. Oof. As it flows over the armor, uh, which glows brightly in response. But you can see the armor itself has tons of cracks all over it. Well, actually, none of you can see it because you're not out, not out there. But it is uh, Valenti's turn. Hey. And Valenti is going to sprint. You can hear it, especially Annie, as this armor. Clank, 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 clank. It's uneven. It's more like crunch, drag, crunch, drag as it tries to pull itself in. As it approaches the door, it is considerably larger than the door. You see the armor reconfigure itself. The breast turns sideways. It folds down, and it takes on a shape of what what we would recognize uh, as people in our world, but they don't. You guys, your characters might not recognize. It looks like a rhinoceros, um, as the, all the armor kind of knits itself together, and it charges through the door in that form. Uh, and that's the end of its turn. You can see that, that it is somewhat discoordinated, and while the armor has repositioned itself into what looks like a much more solid frame, all of those, those lights are still glowing outward, but they seem to have lost a little bit of their luster. Um, that is Valenti's turn. Oh, actually, Valenti would, you would hear Valenti's voice coming from within the, the thing, Close the door. Will do. And when the door closes, there is a more solid thunk than you would have expected. And thunk. it almost feels as though additional uh, heavy weights have moved in to seal the door shut. When the door is shut, um, from around the room, uh, there are small, um, I think I described them as, as pillars that glow and the entire room starts to fill with um, a bright gas. Um, it seeps into all corners of the room. Uh, it does not climb the stairs, strangely enough, as if directed. Uh, and you find uh, for those who are inside the room, all of your clothing is spotless at the moment. Uh, all of the wear and tear has been, has been repaired. Uh, and uh, you also receive... Doo -doo -doo. Three hit points. Gosh is back up. Actually, yeah, it'd be Ooh. enough to uh, to get uh, Gosh back to back to three. Saving my spell slots. <laughs> um, they seem to be somewhat surprised. Their eyes blinking, uh, and then there is a voice that rings out. Uh, I don't know if. Uh, what do we have for languages? I think somebody did. Maybe it was Dudek. Um, did have a smattering of other languages. I do. Just give me two seconds. I've got Draconic and Abyssal. I have Orcish and Common. Common, Dwarves, Elvish, Gnomish, Halfling, and Thieves Can't. Okay. Um,. Actually, it would repeat in three different languages, one of which would be common. The first one is primordial. The second one is, um, oh, shoot, I forgot the name of it. It's a, uh, uh, the language of the gods. Celestial. Celestial. And the third is in common, um, which is, it's not complicated. It's cleaning cycle complete. And... Uh, is the beginning of your turn. That was a free action, Andy, to close the door. And then all this stuff happened. Uh, 
I will then take the a bit more of my movement and I'm going to stab this one. Okay. Because Before. it's been actually I'm going to offhand stab it first with a normal dagger. Okay. Sixteen. Sixteen is a hit. Correct. So it just gets a D four. Four. Next damage. Um, you do notice that the dagger kind of pushes through and doesn't really connect with much. There's sort of a, a slight, like you're cutting through true fog. There is a, a resulting effect, but it doesn't have as much as you expected. Not that you expected but, much from the little dagger anyway. But it took one hit point of damage. <laughs> it, you know, yes, at least. <laughs> that That is all I need. 14, I think that's a mess. Um, 14 is a hit on those things. Oh. They are not nice. hard to hit. So, 21. And that's enough to take out this one. As once more you follow up that thin... The, the expression on the creature's face solidifies for a moment almost of contempt when you strike your strike it with your normal dagger. When you follow up the other one, it doesn't even seem to, to resist and then realizes with, with gather... With gathering realization and, and realizes with realization what am I saying it realizes with gathering a, a horror that the bright glow of vice leaps out and shreds it in two and it just force damage it's wonderful nice uh, vanishes from existence for the moment you seem to be somewhat uh... I am going to grab Gosh by the hand and take Okay. One step and drag him with me. <laughs> he seems grateful and somewhat still disoriented by everything that's happening at the moment. But basically, it's to, to help him get up. Now it's going to be my turn. Okay. Eventful. All right. Um, we will speed forward a little bit as nothing seems to attack for the moment, but you do hear the uh, the pressure on the outside. Um, Valenti uh, also speaks, and you feel like, you know, speaking in common is probably a courtesy um, for everyone that's there. You almost get the intention that it's a mental connection, but the, the voicing helps. Um, as she asks the place to seal itself, and all these little vents that are along here close up as uh, metal slides in, very gratingly as if it hasn't done so for probably a few hundred years, as it begins to seal itself in. We may not still be safe from those... Um, those ghosts, those apparitions, they seem to be able to move through solid objects. But for the moment, we should be safe from any more of that thing's incursion. And as she's saying this, uh, the booming and crashing on the walls grows silent for a second. But, and then there's a oh, loud the crash. <laughs> uh, the tower is lost. As is its energy. I fear this is the end of the station. So are, are we running back to the travel area that we, we started in? I need a moment to recover myself before I can activate the portal. And okay. she will lead, uh, again, kind of in that shifted form, cautiously moving along and, in fact, not encountering anything in the hallway, but lead you back into that room of rejuvenation. Right, I'll follow her. Or ever, I, I'm assuming everybody follows her. Yep. Yeah, unless there's a particular reason to not. So gather you all in there. Is Silas going to join? Okay. Your creature Definitely outside, are you... Are all you, the walls are blocking things. Yeah, sorry. Um, your creature outside, um, 
will continue to, to battle. You you don't have to see it, right? It can still move on its own. Yeah, it's summoned for an hour. It just keeps doing its thing. Okay. Um, after probably uh, about five minutes, you notice that the sense of the summoning has gone. It, mm. was, it was destroyed. Um, perhaps when the tower itself was being overwhelmed, it tried to defend the tower and didn't succeed. Um, Valenti goes over to that same portrait that you had before, the one where you had... Actually, I think it was Dudek that actually had... Uh, had activated the portrait. I think so. Um, she sort of leans down and places one arm or leg in this case of this suit of armor with one of the glows against that same spot on the bottom that Dudek had used. And once more, the, the, the relief painting um, of this, I guess you might say cheekish almost, humanoid character uh, comes to life, winks once more, and that green gas moves into the room. Do not be alarmed. This is merely a room for regeneration. It will help us all recover, and we should be safe in this depth for some time anyway. After that, we will have to make our way to the teleportation room, which I... I hope the portal is not disturbed. It shouldn't be. It's in the heart of everything here, but... I will send some emissaries. And that you is see... says he'll keep an eye on everyone while they sleep. Okay. That's right, because you're immune to poison, which effectively this is. Uh, I will have uh, uh, all of you make a attempt to stay awake, except for Silas. Uh, roll, which is a resistance against poison, which is a constitution roll. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> uh, do dead crits. Um, Annie crits, okay. Uh, Unfortunately, this isn't one that we can just purposefully, yeah. like, <laughs> inhale purposefully. <laughs> we used it, we, didn't we use it before? You did. Yeah. Um, most of you, uh, I think... Most of you fell asleep, except for Silas. Uh, the difference yeah. was that Medric was lying in one of the beds last time. Okay. Um, it does have effect. It just does not have the full effect for those who save, uh, as you kind of stubbornly and naturally I'm not tired. Resist. Um, you notice that the, um, the form of Valenti kind of curls up. Imagine a metallic rhino curling up to sleep. That's what you're seeing right now in front of you. Um, and Dudek also kind of just sort of sits back and, and uh, kind of tastes minty when you think about it. Um, so uh, each of you gets two, or sorry, gets eight hit points back initially. Uh, eight? Yep. Right. And then you'll get half, Back up to 30. You'll get half of the remainder, so five more after that. So a total of, actually for everybody, because, uh, oh, I didn't check for Gosh. Did Gosh fall asleep? Be funny. Please do. Funny. He's pretty beat up. He is very beat up. But it's still a instinctual reaction, unless you're accustomed to it. Ah, Gosh did not succeed, so Gosh gets the full amount. That's the important Good. one right now. Um, <laughs> not like three hit points. He was indeed at three hit points, yeah. Um, it's all good. I'm two hit points from my max, so I'm good. <laughs> Dudek was down to 20, so he was he was not in great shape. And perhaps because she summoned it, it is the full amount for Valenti. This time it does not seem to last as long. Last time it was almost an hour, I think, while you guys were out. It may be just because it was a concentrated dose or perhaps uh, Valenti triggered a different mode for the room. You're not sure. Um, the cleaning already took care of most of you, but the little um, spider mechanical things do come out and attempt to, um, to fix 
everything. So uh, Dudex uh, robes, for example, or his, uh, I, don't know if, I can't remember if he was wearing robes or not, but his clothing uh, is mended, and they are kind of sewing up little spots where it had gotten torn a little bit before. And they crawl all over the giant mechanical rhino, uh, patching small bits here and there. Um, in that time, there have been distant rumblings and what could be considered earthquakes if you were on Earth, where basically the room shakes and shudders a little bit. Every once in a while, there's a larger, louder explo ex explosion. A little bit of dust flies from the ceiling. Uh, and then the whole thing feels like at one point, not far from the time when Valenti awakes, it feels as though the entire room shifts about four degrees in the direction of where that creature was, as if the entire space has moved. That's not good. Now we should get out of here. Um, and Valenti awakes. There, I feel somewhat better. This is new. I still don't know the full capabilities of this thing, which is a shame because I partially designed it. Where do you wish to go? Well, it's impressive. Thank you. It was on a bit of a whim. It took me a hundred years to do, so whim is probably the wrong word, but... I'm glad to see it finally come to fruition. Thank you very much for that. I've been here for and, a long time. And thank you as well for assisting us. Now, I fear we will have to... And before she finishes the sentence, the entire room shifts another five degrees. Now the floor is at a ten degree tilt from where it should be normally. Right. Portal. Portal. Uh, guys, do we go home or do we go to uh, meet up with Tozek? I, th I think home is the best bet right now. We can figure out how to get back to Tozek later. Sounds good. Where is I home? Mean, is that an option or does it only go back to... Hey, we'll go to receptacles. I know of a few directly from here, including one which can give us some peace for a while. Further recovery, unless you are keen to return immediately back to wherever you were coming from, I can offer you a space for some rest and recovery and a further yes. discussion. That, that might be a good idea. Figure out next steps, not when we're in direct threat. Sure. All right. The portal, as I'm assuming you know, is just down the hallway from here. I'm hoping there are, isn't any opposition, but there may be. Get into the portal room, and I'll start things. I'll lead the way. Okay. Um, do I get I full will. movement, or...? You do get full movement, and when, as soon as you step to the door, you do see that one of those shadows has made its way in here. <coughs> There's a shadow. And okay, I'll I'll, and I'll be directly behind Medrick. We'll... Okay. The first opening round we can do kind of simultaneously. We'll switch to the the uh, yeah. turn order afterwards. Yeah, I'll just stand defensively. Okay. Or do we have to do initiative? Because well, I don't do much damage to this, these guys. And I'm this essentially spells. is a, a surprise round. It didn't realize you were coming, so you have surprise when you get there. Perfect. Um, I'm going to get it into its face and instinctively stab. I figured that was probably <laughs> going to be the case. Stabby stab. Stabby stab. Okay, regular... Where is my regular dagger? There it is. Regular dagger. Oh, no, that's not going to hit. That is not a hit. Uh, normal vice. Not going to hit. Mm. I tried. Oh, wow. Even worse. That's surprising. I tried it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, sorry. It's a surprise round. You get advantage. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Uh, regular dagger. Oh, 19 on the regular dagger. Nice. Which is a natural, which is, which is a, a crit, crit, because fighter. Uh, so that would be seventeen. Non magical damage. Okay. And 
then oh i accidentally rolled that in the incorrect one um that's supposed to be an 18. uh either way would have hit 50, uh, 17 is plenty i need to take off that other one okay so uh 27 minus 15 minus three so uh, nine magical damage Uh, it is not down, but it did take a substantial hit from that. Perfect. Uh, we'll move into the regular initiative after Annie now, which would be Dudek. Uh, Dudek's just going to make his way there, not really knowing what's going on yet. Uh, gets to there, sees fighting going on. Takes a bonus action to move around. And will attempt to strike. Where are you, Dudek? Dudecahedron. Uh, sure. Just the regular attack at this point. Oh, I think that's a miss. That normal attack should be minus three, actually, because uh, it doesn't get my bonus for the damage. Minus three damage in total, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I, I forgot to remove my modifier. I gotta work that out differently anyway because I realize it's non magical damage. So it would have been 27 minus 3. So, okay. and then whatever. Or sorry, not 27. That was. 17, the, I think it was. Uh, 13 plus 17 minus 3. Oh, the, well, that's right, both of those. All right, I got to do this again. Uh, like that. And then. All right. Did. Basically, it rolls oh. the total, like the normal damage and the crit damage separately. I accidentally was changing your health, but so sorry. <laughs> oh, it's all good. I have it on mine as well. Do to do so. And so it would be twenty seven divided by how much? Okay. I think I got it now. So he's substantially but not as substantially damaged. And do deck do his own little it's, part. Oh, it's right. the it's the damage that I need for it to get force damage, so uh, that was Dudek's turn. Medric, you're up. All right, I will. You only see the one creature here, thankfully. But is there more than one coming through the wall? Mm hmm. You don't see any. <laughs> All right, I will attack it with Sacred Flame. Ah, okay. That's a save. Yes. Is that a dex save? It's a 2d8, I believe it is. I, I have to check this every single time. Fourteen. Fifteen. Okay, you hit. And two d eight. And this is radiant damage. Yep. Okay. Pew eight. All right, it takes that full eight damage. Uh, you're gonna move it all, or do anything else? Well, there isn't really anything else I can do except for attack this thing. Okay. Where is there? I don't know. You are the master of your bonus actions. I, I only ask the question. I just don't really have any bonus actions, usually. No, okay. unless you're going to summon another spiritual weapon, I don't think you have any. Yep. Or healing or anything like that, because there's a... Healing word if he's got it. Yeah. All right. All right, I'll just move to two, two spaces so other people can move in. Or other creatures can move in. Gosh, just gonna move, and then move again, but be cautious this time. Be cautious this time. Sally, you're <laughs> up. Uh, I think you're muted, Silas. Hmm. 
Oh, I do. Nice. I can see the shadow there. Okay, so yeah, it's right in the middle there. Oh, sorry. I'll just spit some uh, poison at him. It's a DC 15 con save against magical poison damage. Okay. Um, it is struck by it, but does not seem to be affected by it. Okay. Because this one is. Oh, am I looking at the wrong one? Shoot, I'm looking at the wrong one. Uh, yes, that makes much more sense. Sorry, it took more from that. Yeah, it's 11, 11 magical poison. Uh, yep, and it would have taken more from the radiant. I was looking at the other one going, why is that not vulnerable to radiant? should be. I was looking at the wrong one. This actually does take it out. The poison once more mixes with its ethereal form. Shredding it into smaller bits. And that's my turn. And that's that. Ah. And then kind of charging through. Uh, but now blocked by the number of people kind of in the hallway. Um, Valenti behind you all. Is it clear? Yep. yep. As far as we know. And with that, she kind of ushers all of you into this chamber seals the chamber behind you. Um, there we go. I'm going to put one of the eyeballs. Whoops. Keep grabbing the wrong screens. Jeez, too many screens. Uh, seals the chamber behind you, and then you see the room responding to Valenti coming in. Um, the lights on her uh, in the armor start to glow out in different patterns. In front of her, she takes her, uh, you, she transforms once more into the humanoid form. And with the two large club like fists, kind of clangs them gently together and then spreads them apart. And spread out in front of her, something that both Dudek and Silas in particular would recognize, are ghostly images that resemble pages. Um, it is as though she is accessing her book of the, of the, Argenti Sagex. Um, the room shakes once more. The, the spindles where electricity and other energy emerge from start to light up again in the room. Uh, you can see that every time that the room kind of gets that shake, the spindle itself seems to uh, spark a little bit as though the energy is uneven. But she gestures out and several um, runes start to appear. Do not be alarmed. While the place I'm taking you to will appear problematic, I assure you it is safe. And with that, the ground seems to disappear into a brilliant white hole and all of you have a distinct falling feeling as you travel through another portal. Thanks for the war! <laughs> and end up in a new room. This room is little more than a cave, really. Large, round. It has odd shapes to the way the floor is set. There are what appear to be trees, but they appear to be almost flesh-like in trees. Withered, however, um, but they look more like the composition of bones or even potentially of arteries. Around a hole that goes deeper in, you see a cluster of very large skulls, the smallest of which is still as tall as any of you, the tallest of which twice or almost three times your height. In the center of the room down, down below, there is a gathering of four pillars, which is where, in fact, Val Valenti appears. Uh, and around you, there is a, a cave. There is some, some, it looks like trees on this particular map, but it's actually um, rough stones that are kind of corroded. They look almost like coral at this height. Um, the skin trees and giant skulls? Something like that. <laughs> okay, that's creepy. The warning um, was appreciated. Yeah. And 
you see her already starting to stand stronger, the light's going stronger, and you get a general feeling almost of the circle that she's standing in uh, is sort of, a, if you will, a central, a central circle of power. This whole place seems to be lit up in many ways by her and by this place. Welcome to Hodako Iroldoi Musea. In more of a common tongue. Bless the, you. The Museum of Dead Giants. You will have a chance to rest here. I will seal the portal from... from the sanctum. One less place where we live, where we exist. Before we left, I managed to keep the portal on... Well, it's energy cycle, if you will. That creature probably won't be killed by it, but it'll have a rather nasty surprise when that decides to overload. It'll destroy the entire station, everything that we had there. But there wasn't much left, I guess. Could it possibly be rebuilt in the future at some point? Yeah. I don't know if I'm patient enough to build another one. Not like that. I wasn't the only one involved, either. I hope that others are out there, but I don't really know. None of you seem to be of my kin. None of you are Agentes Sagex, as far as I can tell. No. Though I do have her, I do have the ring in the book. As do I. Uh, I, I have for some time... Well, and Dudek looks a bit sheepish. I I sort of did claim the title. One of many that I've gathered. Most are academic in nature. And there's somebody else, too. Well, player. I, player forgets his name, but uh, guy in white. I don't think we actually have his name. Okay. Uh, you know him as Tassar. Yeah, oh, Tassar. Yeah. yeah. We don't know if that's his actual name, but... So do you say there is one more Tassar or guy in white? Who might be Argenti, Argenti Sagex? I don't know. He sent us on this rat race. He had a book and he seemed like a dick, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are many of my people which would qualify as that. I, I'm not familiar with this Tassar. Maybe I will seek him out. Why were you sent here? You. So... We were trying to find somebody and ended up not where we think we needed to be. Well, we were kind of sent to find stuff, maybe, that might lead us to figure out how to do portals so we could get to people that we need to rescue. I think. I see. Well, my people were the experts on extra planar travel. I I say were, I suppose more of us might still be out there. Tell me, what year is it? At least where you're from. That's where, complicated. Where are you from? Uh, Omasia. so we're from Omasia. And at that, she kind of once more spreads her hands wide and starts and puts an array of, of floating pages in front of her, scanning through them. And time is complicated. Hmm. Is it a fey realm? No. And then a few of the pages disappear. Mortals, then? Yes. A few more pages disappear. Um. We don't... Gods are involved. And time is a mess. And... Everybody has forgotten, and we vaguely remember, our, our group here vaguely remembers forgetting. We don't remember and what we forgot. We don't remember what we forgot, and time is missing. Yeah, dude, like, didn't you uh, do a, a thing with your device? Because I remember, like, there was one time uh, dude like, was... But let's go back to conveniently where we're <laughs> looking at earlier today. <laughs> So back in Dudek's library, yes. uh, he'd showed you the planar orrery. 
Yeah, I, um, I could not remember that word for life. Yeah, it's a weird word. I love the word, but it's one of those ones that I've only really learned in the last couple of years. Um, and it's a device that essentially would shift and change de depending on what time setting you put into it uh, to show you the relative positions of the planes relative to where you are, presumably. Yeah, um, the time was like messed up around well, our timeline, basically. <laughs> there was a gap, essentially. Um, and the orrery itself, when trying to pursue that gap, um, started to break down, uh, locking the compass in it, actually, as well. Um, and as you explain this, I'm assuming, and Dudek will fill in kind of the, his knowledge, and Dudek has more knowledge of the Argenti Segex, but it's clearly fragmented. Um, as, he, as he tries to explain and, and every once in a while tries to sound authoritative on it, um, he gets gently corrected by Valenti, who... who doesn't necessarily supply a lot more information, but just kind of uh, uh, kind of gently says, well, no, that's not really what happened, uh, but doesn't really offer the, the difference. After a while, um, you can see Dudek's um, energy wane a little bit as he realizes that probably you'll know more than 75% or less of what he actually knows or what he had conjectured was actually correct. Um it seems now, though... this is much closer in character brain than Marie brain, because this is two years ago. Yeah. But my notes on the date situation is the date between now and the date on the compass. Memory fuzzy, memory dreams. Left home, there was a war uh, when I left. There was no war when I left. It would have had more, uh, I would have had tr more trouble leaving. If I can't account for this time, this would have been around two years. Right. Um, so sometime between year blank and year blank is what I'm going to say. And player does not know the years. Okay. Uh, I think you had, in the end, you were with Dudek's help calculating that it was a few hundred years, potentially. Yes. Where we're locked in that, that. that gap that the orrery was failing to be able to represent. Um, and Valente listens to it. Um, she doesn't offer too much commentary on that part because it's definitely outside of her experience. And you get the impression that however long she was locked up in there, it goes back a lot further than recorded time on Omesha. Um, it seems to anyway, where she has no references to those. Um, how far and wide do you talk to Valenti about this? How much are you willing to, to tell her about all the people you've encountered or about the Athlons, or about um, Paluxia, Cathron, any of that stuff. I forget. Do, I, do our characters even know the name Paluxia, or do they just know, like, a god is messing? I uh, think we know Lux. I think Lux is the name that we know. Okay. Yeah, we know that there seems to be one missing, but we're not sure. Okay. I wasn't sure if you'd gotten the full name before or not. Yeah. I, I think we've come across, we, we figured out that there's a missing god and we've come across the name Lux that seems to kind of fit lore-wise where we've come across it fit in that space. Okay. Um, and um, I, I think I'm going to more or less explain most of it especially what we figured out while we were with Dudek. So, and then go from there, basically. Okay. I'm just going to look for something here real quick. Yeah, I'm okay with giving her as much information as possible. I mean, she could be useful. <laughs> okay. She could be useful and she can be our ticket home. <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh, I literally left myself a, a note saying, fill this in later. <laughs> Excuse me as I, I just attempt to fill that in now. Uh, doggone it past me. You were doing so well up to that point. Um, do Does Silas discuss uh, the mother at all? Is that part of what, what uh, they will um, offer? Silas isn't saying anything. He's going off and taking a rest until he can get his power back. Okay. You can easily consider this discussion to be a short rest if that makes any difference to people. 
Um, yeah. And once that's done, he's going to start identifying the items we found. He leaves it to the others to explain things. Okay. Um, and we can run through those. Uh, I'm assuming Basic you have a list. Yeah. Basically, I think things that I'll avoid to be more specific is specifically that we're more or less working with Catherine to try to make sure that the god is forgotten. And that's basically going to be the main thing that I skirt around. But Catherine, Catherine in general will be mentioned and the fact that there's something to do with a god missing. Okay. And we're trying to rescue our friend from and, a, yeah. a, another plane. Um, oh, shoot, did I have that one? Sorry. Um, I knew I had a name. Because finding Catherine is also part of our planar travel goals. <laughs> As as before, as I was saying, Valendi listens, and the name Omatia seems to strike a familiarity with her, and you notice the sort of nod in, in recognition at that name, uh, and then the the floating sheets that are in front of her narrow down to just two at that point. I have never been to your world. I've been to many before. I have a few records of it. One of the god worlds. Interesting. And a god is missing. Huh. Happens from time to time, I suppose. Dangerous business. The deeper the gods get involved in the world, the... Well, the more dangerous it is when they remove themselves, I suppose. So, never having been to your world, I'm not really sure how accurate I can be in finding a portal to it. I'll see what I can do. Generally, portals are tricky. You need a bit of a nexus crystal or something to really make it work properly. And when she says nexus crystal, did it actually, do you have one on you? Uh, well, not exactly. There are some woven into this suit. Allow me to traveling to travel between some realms and one of ours. Plus, each of these places has a nexus crystal of its own, uniquely crafted so that you can find your way here, deeper within the realm. This, by the way, is the plane of Earth. We've preferred this one. It's a little easier to build in. Dude, uh, the crystals you had on your table, were, were, there, were those nexus crystals? I, I don't know. I, we never really figured out exactly what they were for. I assumed for teleportation circles or something like that, but maybe Nexus or Planar. I, we were given these, and once more, as he's done numerous times, Dedek will hold up the, the charms that you were given by Tassar. Those are fragments of Nexus crystals. If they are from your realm, then it should be possible to make our way back. That is good to hear. I, I think that's what, what he said as well. They were given to us also as protection. And they also seem to react to some of your devices. They would. Uh, Nexus crystals have... It's hard to describe it to a layman, but... They have the potential of whatever realm they're from. And the potential to connect with that realm as well. seeing we're being invaded by cat in a bag um hmm. silas will hold out the amethyst crystal he got from Catherine's cave mm -hmm. and ask if this is of any use um without hands it's very difficult for her to hold on to anything uh, but she has, has to sort of hold it up and between the two large uh uh malls um there's sort of a scanning ray, if you will, that, that emerges from them. It has potential. It's not Nexus Crystal, but it is something of a, a binder, if you will. 
wherever this was from was probably a space where they had been trying to build a gate of some kind, whether permanent or temporary. It can be useful in the construction of gates. Permanent ones are particularly complicated, but temporary ones can be set up. They don't last very long, but they do the job. Plus, a permanent gate is really a risk. Anything can come through a permanent gate, once opened. Ours are much more temporary. And protected. Oh. So, oh. Let me know what you find out. He goes back to resting. Okay. Um, do you have questions you want to ask of Valenti? You kind of get the sense that Valenti knows a lot, but there's really nowhere for her to start. And she is concerned that if she starts at the wrong level, you won't have a clue what she's saying. Dudek makes a few starts here and there, but even he seems to be a little bit caught up and pulls out a book uh, and starts to note some of these things down, refers to some of his theories and kind of gets lost in that. I'll ask her, I'll, I'll briefly describe what I, or what Melora said during the sending about that plane. And it's like, I'll ask her, what plane, do you know what plane that, that might be? Oh, it does fit a few different descriptions, but um, I have a decent idea. It is the plane of a titan, one who stayed out of the wars, well, one of the wars anyway. That's a bit before my time, but how do we describe it? Titans are forces of the universe. They spring into existence all of their own, as far as anyone knows. They claim a domain, they rule over that domain, and if they're peaceful enough, people get by. But the gods are another form of uh, universe creation. They tend to be a little more jealous and want to keep people to themselves. So naturally, it's often the case that titans and gods clash. Um, uh, yeah, there was something about a titan on our world. So apparently there was a very, very advanced uh, society thousands of years before our time who challenged a titan. And now somebody's trying to put the pieces back together because apparently they beat it. It's said that titans never truly die. They can be taken apart. They can be even disintegrated, but never truly die. And she kind of looks around. Although I think we have a little bit of a contradiction here. This room is... Was? Hmm. I suppose it depends on your interpretation, but... It is the skull of a titan. This whole room. We studied giants here. Took them from many different realms. Tried to understand all the way from the smaller version of giants to the very largest... We found that there was still residual power within this skull. It's what we use to actually maintain this portal and some of the ambient energy you feel around you. I hope it never comes back to life. It would be rather confusing if it does. Still, there are signs, I suppose. She gestures over at the odd-shaped trees. So, if someone were yes, powerful enough, they probably could revive one. Those aren't really trees, are they? I mean, what is a tree, really? It's an organism that grows out of the soil. It's somewhat independent, but dependent upon the soil and its environment. But not a tree, as you would normally say, I don't think. I've traveled to a lot of different realms over my time, and uh, I've seen a lot of things that people would qualify as a tree. We call it that, call it that here, but it's a tree that grows in the mind of a titan, I guess. The titans and the gods, when they fight, it's not good. 
There have been planes which have been ripped apart by it. It sounds as though your realm, the gods, won. At least temporarily. I am surprised by these other people who'd found enough power to revive a titan. They haven't well, revived Well, pieces of one. Yeah. And a little bit of the lore that you kind of remember, um, the sort of, in fact, Dudek would kind of relay some of this as well, is that the legends of the Athlons, they're, they're very unknown to the modern people, but the legend is that they challenge the gods for dominion. They were mortals who challenged the gods for dominion. They lost, apparently, except for one. Well, I would love to talk to you more, but I feel like you have business you need to go do, and I have my own. Um, could you assist us in how to build a portal? I think that information might have been omitted from the books that we'd have. And I think both books are here? Silas's book is here. Silas's book is here. Okay. Um, do, you have, uh, do you have the book, Silas? I always have it. And he pulls it out of his pack and he'll open it up. Okay. And once more, that brilliant pillar of white extends out to support it. Ah, it's an older model. A little more portable, perhaps, but also, uh, I don't know, a little more vulnerable. And she once more spreads her arms wide and pages appear floating in midair, the sort of bluish outline of them, similar to the, the hidden pages that were in your book. Looks like you're missing these. And she gestures, and several pages flow and fill into the back of your book. Nice. That should give you what you need as far as the knowledge. It will be tricky, depending on how advanced your your studies are. I understand you, and he po she points to uh, Dudek. You've got some advanced knowledge on the topic, but it'll it'll be challenging. But that should be able to make you a, a portal of some kind, temporary. As for where your friend is, well, I'm not sure of which specific realm it is, but the best option, and I would assume you also related that where, when Melora and Graveler went missing, it was because there was these portals opening up from that realm yeah. and creatures coming out. The, your best option is to try to reproduce that space if you can. Um, Nexus crystals form on the very edge between realms. Um, some argue, and there was some proof to it, that they are shards of the crystal um, domes which are around all the realms, the protections. And as they are pierced, as the realms are traveled into, the crystal sphere is shattered and scattered. It's very rare that you can pick up a Nexus stone itself. The small remnants you have right now um, are impressive, but not nearly enough on their own to power one of these circles, one of these uh, portals, I should say. There is a method to gather them. It's difficult. You have to stop halfway between here and there. And in most cases, you don't even perceive that there is a halfway between here and there. But if you can stand on the edge, on the border between realms, it said you can gather a crystal or two. For the moment, if you know where these breaches have occurred, there should still be a remnant of that energy. And a nexus yep. crystal from your own portal or your own world should be enough to, to open it briefly. Was there a question in there? I thought I heard someone's voice. In there. So basically go back to where the portals originally opened, where, where the portal she was taken through was. Those um, things you're wearing, you should be able to use them to locate the strongest of those. Um, not every portal will have much remnants behind. If there was a larger breach, then that would be the easiest. 
And then once you've opened it, depending on where it opens on the other side, it may be an easier or hard journey. If you have something of the people that you're looking for, it can help to direct the portal to where they are. Right. But it it's sounds as though else. one of your friends is, or the two of them, I guess, are trapped in a realm of, well, punishment, I guess you might say. Gods often punish the Titans by putting them in realms where they themselves are punished, but also where they are meant to mete out punishment. It sounds as though that was one of them there. As for the other, uh, free floating in an open space, uh, feels like the astral realm to me. Reachable, strangely, by most mortals in dreams, but not usually for very long and not usually very strong. You could also open up a portal there. Again, if you have something of the of the being you're looking for, it can make it easier. Are those the so only for two example, you... if she gave us if she gave us gifts, that could help. It would definitely help. If you have right, something... the gift that I lost in the Titan realm. <laughs> if you have something of a more direct connection of them, that would help more. Well, to Catherine's cave, it is. Yeah. To see if we can find something of hers. And Dudek kind of looks over and looks over at Silas, and then kind of looks over at at uh, Valenti. I think there's also one other different kind of seeking. Now, I don't know how much of of this you've mentioned to Dudek, Silas, about seeking the mother. Um, I don't think he's mentioned it to Dudek at all. Uh, so Danny it's, and it's, uh, Medrick so, would know. Okay, so it is a bit surprising when he mentions it, uh, hmm. when he looks over at you. It, there are more powerful beings who might be of use in our realm that are being sought by groups of individuals. I do not wish to betray any confidence, Cyrus, but I had a very interesting discussion with Odega. Yeah, no doubt. Yes, we are looking for a way to bring the mother to our world. The mother? Uh, that sounds like a very common name. Hmm. Zagwatha is what she has been called by others. Well, oh. um, I see. The name has some vague recollection, but I, I'm not sure if I know exactly. Uh, this being is farther away than than these other realms. Probably. From my estimation, uh, most likely drawing from somewhere in the far realms, in fact. Oh. The far realm is where we were next to just now. Deeper in, things become more chaotic, much more incoherent. Uh, I would be very careful of trying to open any sort of realm towards, or any sort of gate or portal towards that realm, but if you are seeking that, it can be done. It will need a little bit more than what you would be getting, using for those other portals, something a little more substantial, but do you believe, Silas, that this is the best? Do you trust this mother? He has a chance to bring my wife back from wherever she is being held. It's not exactly answering the same question, but I see the point. <laughs> Very well. And once more, she spreads her arms wide, selects, selects about a dozen pages, and they 
appear in the back of your book. This will be dangerous, and I would recommend that you do not leave this gate open for very long. There are many things, as you've seen, who would wish to travel through from the incoherent far realms into the much more substantive and edible inner realms. Yes, that cannot be allowed. You will need something a bit more substantial as well. And she reaches down and um, the circle in the ground that she's been standing in, the one that had essentially been recharging her, um, she suddenly swipes down with one massive uh, metallic fist and breaks off a crystal from that area. This was the connection to the sanctum, but that no longer is necessary. It is a connection to the far realms. A nexus stone. Enough that should open your portal. Lilas walks over and takes it. Thank you. I will do the best I can with it. Please do. I'd really hate to have to come there and destroy it myself. Thousand's expression changes slightly, but he doesn't say anything. And what will you do? I'm going to see what's so, left of our people. There are there... several enclaves across the plains. I have to see what's become of us. If we had anything to do with what happened to you as well. When gods are removed, it's a messy business. And they are never really removed. Like the Titans, they... They linger. I'll look into that too. Can we keep in touch, our group and you, and possibly the rest of the Argenti Sagex? Those of you with the rings might be able to send a message to me. No guarantee it will get to me. Similarly, I can try to send you a message from time to time. Extra can planar use... communication is complicated. I have managed it before with the friend that I mentioned earlier that's trapped in the hellish realm. Well, that's good. By using a power granted to me by Ignis, I can contact her tele telepathically. But the messages are very short. I, I may be able to do the same with you. You can certainly try. I may be outside of the realm that your god can reach. But gods have uncountable and mysterious powers. They're really annoying that way, you know? Some are. No, they all are. My people prefer to understand the world. They just do things. Well, some do things for the greater good. Oh, that's always the... always the banner. Well, no, some of them do say for the greater evil. There's some out there you really don't want to encounter. <sighs> like I've ever done that. I was a researcher. Mm -hmm. I've done very well, but... It's going to be hard. Still. I think I know where you're from. I think I can find at least one point where we can set down. Are you ready to go home? Uh, we want to rest here first and then go home or go home first. It might be wiser to rest because what if something happens on the way? You're welcome to rest. I can't offer anything for food. I haven't needed it for a while. I mean, I would have brought in at least like a couple days rations in the bag of holding. <laughs> yeah. If you can chew through this, you'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so are you going to take a take a rest? Yes, or are we do taking a, a long rest here? I, I think that taking a, a rest first is a good idea. 
we don't know where she's going to drop us off. Yeah. Who knows? She could be dropping us off on a completely different island. Or she could roll a one on her portal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, the good news is you're, you're small, or the bad news is there's demons all around you. Have fun. Bye. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you'll take a day's rest. Um, Valenti will talk a little bit about her travel. She has traveled to multiple planes before, done research in multiple places. Um, she had run across a very advanced group uh, in one particular plane of Mechanis, which is where she got the inspiration for building the suit, the suit that she's in, um, that she exists in now. The suit has different forms as well, um, including one which is a group of uh, not exactly monkeys, but they're close to monkeys. It's a little bit weird to experience and to see someone as three people who all seem to move in perfect synchrony. All still with that metallic sheen, however, and all still having those those eye or those light beams. Um, so it, it it's a little bit strange, but it does afford her hands. <laughs> it's just a little harder to coordinate. Hands are useful. Uh, as we take a rest, can we also take a bath? Can we do what now? Can we take a bathroom break? <laughs> well, we yeah, I mean we're fairly close to the end, but we can do a little break okay. here. How close, roughly? Well, we would be going from here back to home to do the long, the, the, uh, downtime. Okay. Uh, which could take a, you know, take a half an hour or so, but if you need to go right now, now would be a good time to do it. BRB. <laughs> uh, I'll but, refresh my water. Okay. So we will take a bit of a pause here. I might as well go too if everybody's gone. Okay.
So now refreshed, and after having had a long rest in this particular place, uh, Medric, or sorry, Dudek was probably asking as many questions as he could in a very es esoteric way, and Valenti was trying to relate some of that higher science to him. Uh, you think he got some of it. He certainly seems interested in it. And the two of them probably Annie talked to him. will either. have written in her diary about this whole ordeal. Uh, and without, if there's any other last questions, this is the opportunity. You, you may or may not see Valenti again for quite some time. Um, but having an actual member of the, the Argenti Sagex with you, who can explain some things about portals, this is, this is your last opportunity. If like, not, oh man, I, I had a dream. It's like, I think we were still in our own plane, but I was in a library and I was an elf. And I was looking for knowledge. And, like, I, I have a feeling that this version of me would have been, like, over the moon to be asking questions to <laughs> Valenti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was all. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Well, Silas is off to one side identifying the magic items. Okay. Um, which ones in particular? I can actually tell you what they are if you have the... Yep, I have the list of stuff that we grabbed. Okay. There's a circlet with evocation magic. Okay, one at a time here. I mean, I got to look them up. Yep. Okay, uh, that is uh, known as a circlet of blasting, a, an uncommon common item. When wearing the circlet, you can use an action to cast the Scorching Ray spell with it. When you make the spell's attacks, you do so with an attack bonus of plus five. Uh, the circlet can't be used this way again until the next dawn, so it's once per day. Yeah, circlet of blasting. Um, it disapproves. <laughs> there were two halfling-sized items. I think I only included magical stuff in the list, but I don't have any listing as to what their magic aura was. There was a halfling-sized circlet and a halfling-sized cloak. Okay. It's possible they're just normal, and I thought they were magical. I don't know. Uh, they were, in fact, both magical. Um. There is the the circlet, is a circuit a circlet of perfection. Um, only humanoids can attune to it. The circlet transform, transforms the attuned wearer into attractive. It says human, but it's really whatever uh, humanoid spe species you are, of average height and weight. Um, the circlet chooses the physical characteristics of the form, such as age, gender, skin, color, hair, color, and uh, and voice. Uh, except for size, the wearer's statistics and racial traits don't change, nor do items worn or carried by the wearer. And removing the circlet ends the effect. So a circlet of perfection. And the cloak is a cloak of many fashions. While wearing the cloak, you can use a bonus action to change the style, color, and apparent quality of the garment. The weight doesn't change regardless of the appearance. The cloak can't be anything but a cloak, but it can duplicate the appearances of other magical cloaks, but doesn't gain their magical properties. Okay, we also had Nancy. another. We also had another cloak that had illusion magic. Yeah, uh, that one would have been the one with illusion magic. There was another cloak. Okay, um, made up of black silk interwoven with faintly silvery threads. It is a cloak of arachnida. While wearing it, and you do have to attune for this one. You have resistance to poison damage. You have a climbing speed equal to your walking speed. You can move up, down, and across vertical uh, surfaces and upside down along ceilings while leaving your hands Ooh. free. Um, you can use an action to cast the web spell, and you can't be caught in webs of any sort and can move through webs as if they were difficult terrain. Uh, the web spell fills twice the normal area, but only is d usable once per day. The Cloak of Wait. Arachnida. Was there anything else? Um, I think the only other thing was a large long sword with an eye-like gem in the handle made by someone from the Hobgoblin Kingdoms to the north. I think it looked like a katana. Uh, yes. Uh, it appears to be a Hobgoblin katana. Very dark black blade, a pommel with a deep red eye-like gem set into it. It is indeed a magical katana. Uh, magic sword plus one. It does additional 1d4 lightning damage. 
And while you're looking at magical things, you also realize the cube that Valenti asked you to retrieve. Um, it's that, that was my question. I had a question and I forgot about it. What was the cube about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, outside of the pillar that it was in, which allowed it to be amplified and also uh, focus some of its abilities, outside of that, it is a cube of force. Um, it has uh, 36 charges, um, regains 1d20 expended charges daily at dawn, Depending on the face you press on it, uh, you can cause different effects, and they, co they cost different amounts. And you said it has 36 charges? 36 charges. For example, the first face, if you press it, press it, only requires one charge and creates a barrier where gases, wind, and fog cannot pass through it. Second face causes, costs two charges, uh, and then non-living matter can't pass through the barrier. Uh, walls, floors, and ceilings can pass through at your discretion. Three fa third phase costs you three charges. Living matter can't pass through the barrier. So in each case, it's creating a barrier which is uh, a cube 15 feet on a side centered on you and moves with you, lasting for one minute. For four charges, spell effects can't pass through the barrier. For five uh, 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 points, or five charges, Nothing can pass through the barrier. Walls, floors, and ceilings can pass through at your discretion, and then you can deactivate it as well, pressing the sixth charge. Cool. Yeah. Very useful item. Um, yeah, so those are the things you gathered. Do, were there anything else? There were a number of things that were there, but there's some things you didn't grab. No, we had to leave behind the uh, thing that made everything clean and might have done other stuff. Right, right. Uh, that was a cleansing stone. I think it was that one. All right. Well, it would have been nice to uh, establish our own business, the cleaning stone, <laughs> back in Omasia, but uh, I guess fire cleans things too. Let's see. Fire cleans things too. Spoken like an Ignean. <laughs> um, Valenti does instruct you that while the signal to those small crystals you have, those tokens you have around your neck, is weak, um, working together, you can use them to locate a, a weakness in the crystal sphere. Uh, it is those weaknesses which make the best place for, uh, the best success for a uh, temporary gate or for a larger gate as what's needed for bringing through uh, Zagwatha. Um, so one of the things you might do during your downtime, for example, is start going over the town and triangulating where those are. Um, one person can search alone, but the more people that search together, the more... Uh, the higher chance you have of actually getting a better result. And the stronger that result is, the better the gate will be. With all the micro piercings that were going on, micro piercings, ha, that were going on uh, in the shadow, in the, uh, in the crystal sphere, there are dozens, if not more, of small tears, but you'll be looking for something bigger. So does she want to keep the cube? Do you ask for it? Uh, no, I'm just wondering, like she said, she wanted it brought. So is she asking it, asking for it from us? Or did she just want to make sure it was brought? It, was too, it. it was too valuable to leave there. It can be of some considerable use. I will find yeah. others if you need can, it. Can we borrow it? Uh, given the unlikelihood of us ever meeting again, you can always well, try to return that it. How about this? Keep it with you. Keep it safe. And maybe at some random point in the future, I will need it, and I'll ask for it back. Sounds good. Sounds good. Besides, if you're going to play around with planar travel, and you haven't been doing it for a hundred years, you're going to need some help. Well, 
Thanks. And Mendrick makes makes mental notes to like center of memes by ascending. All right. I think I know of a place. Um, gather around the circle, please. Um, and Gosh also kind of sidles up. He's looking back and forth at all of you to try to figure out exactly which direction he's going in, but right for now, he's staying with you. We might as well. We'll figure out how to get Gosh yeah. back to the Beholder eventually. And this counts as a long rest, by the way, what you've had. Yeah. Um, you're a little hungry. Um, aside, even the rations are not that great. Um, but it, it's enough to get by. Um, there is water here. If you want to drink it, it's quite stale. You're not sure where it comes from. Valenti's not quite sure where it comes from. Um, mm, nah. And if you do want to explore, there is a, a set of stairwell that goes into an opening. That actually goes into another room full of bones, okay. which are all organized and cataloged according to size of giants. Um, it doesn't seem to be anything living here at all. Um, and there's not much light either. But um, essentially the entire anatomy of a gigantic titan is explorable as the skeletal structure captured within a realm of stone and all the different giants that are represented are also there as well. Some of these giants are hundreds of feet tall. Um, and you gather that, judging from the head alone of this one, which is nearly 100 feet across, that the Titan itself would have been hundreds upon hundreds, if not thousands of feet tall. It's ridiculous in scale. So did, does that track with like the Titan pieces we've seen in our world so far? I mean, unless you really know anatomy. Actually, is, is Medric trained in, in, in medicine? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, cleric. If, uh, Combat if, medic. If, uh, uh, if you th assume a Titan is roughly humanoid in shape, then yes, uh, the massive organ you were in would have fit within the chest cavity of this thing. Um, because what you saw was an arm, an organ of some kind. I think I might have been the pancreas. I believe it was yeah. pancreas or a kidney. Yeah, I think it was the pancreas. Um, and we've been in a yeah, stomach. Right. We, have, we haven't seen it flying. Right. You've been, in, you've been inside other pieces, but it's hard to judge those ones. Um. So yeah, this would. I, that I just would... realized that, that stomach is still like under the city. Yep. Fun thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you're able to kind of. Uh, Dudek is kind of marveling. He was part of a traveling uh, ensemble of, kind of. There was a zoo there as well as his own anatomical studies, and there's a part of him which clearly wants to stay, but also recognizes there is no food here. Um, Valenti themselves is going to be leaving soon. <laughs> So uh, he, he kind of tries to take in as much as he can while he's here. Um, well, he could probably just walk around the museum if we're not likely to come back here again. And you wouldn't be able to get here directly either. This is one of the places which is only connected to another hub of our own. Um, it, it, it's protected against regular planar travel. But if you find yourself at one of our hubs, you might be able to get here if you can find the way to do the coordinates properly. It's beyond what I can explain quickly. What do you mean by a hub? Like the place we just left? Assuming not destroyed? Well, yeah, essentially. They're connected. <laughs> you have to know how to manipulate the controls and set the uh, direction. There are only a few thousand letters to remember in our codes. Easy peasy. Uh, you got that, Dudek? Uh, I've made notes. <laughs> I would like to come back here at some point and explore more. I know that you're looking for your people, Valenti, and that they are, well, well beyond what my poor mortal flesh might be, but if it were possible, I, I, would, I would join you. Um, that's very generous. I'll think about it. If we run across any more of your people on our travels, how would they best contact you? Just give them my name. Um, and if uh, 
If Dudek and her are traveling together, I can contact Dudek. I'll help you for the moment, but I, uh, let's consider it a, a long-term plan. I'm done traveling with the circus for now, I think. Seen too much since then. I know. Right, circus, uh, how does that... Re yeah, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll try to, like, telepathically contact Tauzek tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I mean, he, he must be wondering where we and where Gosh is. Only contact him if you want co more contact from him in the future. He's looking for a way to bring his god into your world. Like, player question, is that really... I thought it was... What, 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 was, Tauz what, what was that Tauzek looking for again? It's like so far back in my notes. Way to find, find, make his god come into the world. And yeah, he wants the the, the, uh, the all-powerful, all-seeing Omicron to to come through from its own mm. far realm part. He's my direct competition. Yeah, how about no? Okay. Yeah, not competition so much as um, potential colleague. Well, <clears throat> I don't I don't consider him competition, but I certainly don't consider him a colleague. <laughs> All right. Without further ado, she uh, steps into the center of the circle and once more spreads her hands in front of her. And you can see now, it's to our modern eyes, it would have seemed to be almost a laser keyboard that is projected. And even with the very inarticulate, uh, uh, bulbous uh, club hands that she has, she's able to weave through it, um, generating a, a sort of matrix of... Um, of coordinates and the just space before she's she starts to to cast stuff i i'm gonna go up to her and like basically grab her arm and be like good luck and thank you and the the, the nine foot tall giant metallic golem looks down at you and kind of nods thank you I, I i it's been hundreds of years since anybody said something that nice it means a lot good luck and we're all counting on you and and <laughs> yeah, good luck with your travels too. It's dangerous, but I think you guys are dangerous too. And it's hard to Wink. tell without a full face whether she's winking or not. Um, but she steps back and out of the circle, and the circle grows in light and energy. It swirls and go ahead, step in. I will step in. I also step in, yeah. And one yep. by one, each of you step into the circle. I'll have each of you make a perception or arcana roll. It's your choice. Perception, because my arcana is shit. <laughs> Actually, Dudek will make a roll as well. Dirty 20. Character-wise, it makes more more sense for me to do perception because Arcana is... I don't do the magic things. That's fair. Yeah, Silas is watching very closely as she does her thing. Okay. So that looks like a 14 from Silas. A dirty 20 perception, I'm assuming, from Medic, yep. or is that okay? Uh, and an 11 from perception, okay. So, um, since you were specifically watching her, Silas, um, you get the, the gist of what she's doing. It is as much about describing the place and integrating the, the Nexus crystal as anything else. It is about describing a geometry of five or six dimensions. It is about um, projecting that both places meet at this one spot. And then there is a certain amount of magical force which is used to literally break through the crystal spheres of both sides. Um, and then you step through. Medric. The full-on archaic symbology and all that is a bit lost on you. You kind of understand in principle the amount of forces involved, and certainly there is there is Arcana, but it's it's 
a little bit confusing. But something that something that uh, she said resonates with you as you step through the threshold. And for that briefest of instant instance, you are aware. It's the breath between one moment and the next. In the one moment, you're standing in this museum of dead giants. In the next moment, you're standing in a space which is familiar, smells badly, and you're able to orient yourself. But then in that instance between, between seconds, between time, you make out both barriers. The crystal sphere, at least in a conceptual sense, of leaving that space. It's rocky and solid. It's multi-layered, like, like tough slate. Little frayed edges that seem to shatter and then recombine. The other side, the one towards Omatia, is smaller. Like there's only a small window to actually move through. It bends like, like the lens of an eye. And you feel yourself piercing through that. It flexes, it resists. But ultimately the force that you're projected with pushes through it and you're on the other side. And Do I have time by any chance to make a reflex save and grab a crystal? Or? You can try. You can oh, make yeah. a dexterity save and try. It will be very difficult. You have now oh, perceived, yeah. however, that yes, there is a place between here and there. With my plus dexterity score of zero. The question will be... Do not mess the portal up for us. The question will be, which side are you grabbing? You're going to grab for the museum, or you're going to try to grab for Omesha? Probably Omesha. Okay. I mean, our, our, our portals are going to be getting made from Omesha, so I figured that's where you saw. Okay. In that split of a second, in the, in the moment between perception and action, it slips from your grasp. You try to grab okay. onto it. It feels almost like, like hard rubber, and you can't put your hand around anything enough to grab a piece. An attempt was made. Dudek is also going to make an attempt. Because Dudek rolled a 19. Nice. But rolled a 10 oh. on the attempt. Mm. And he was attempting to grab from the museum side. And you find yourself thrust into a somewhat familiar space. The ground is uneven. The smell is overwhelming. There's a, actually, each of you make a constitution saving throw. Uh, if you have. Not 20. Actually, Silas <laughs> will not be affected. I could have used that when trying to grab a crystal. Um, both of us, both of us that much. Wow. So only, only Dudek is particularly affected. Oh, right. What about, uh, what about your what poor new friend? Gosh. Gosh. Uh, let's see if Gosh has... Kind of being dragged over for the ride. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's not particularly good at it. Nope. So, in fact, it is the NPCs that both, when assaulted with the tremendous, thick smell of the sewers of Elthwater, both retch violently on the ground. Possibly also because they were traveling through an ethereal realm which is never a, com a pleasant experience. All of you recognize, however, uh, even Dudek, that you are indeed in the sewers below Elf Fodder, in that room where you'd found some strange markings on the floor that had been mostly disrupted. The one with the hole to a uh, storm thing? Yeah. Mm. Great. Uh, we don't have a key back out. It's all good. You have me. <laughs> and it won't belabor the the, I, the the fact it wasn't. It is not very hard to make your way out. You do not encounter the, the caretaker. Um, and the. Hey, wasn't there another door that we never explored? 
Um, you don't see one. I mean, like, it was elsewhere on the map, anyway. It, no, there was a door that there were, it would have made sense for there to be a door there, but none of us could roll high enough to find the door. Yeah, I think it went to the other end of the uh, the otherworldly room in the hole. But uh, no, we never found a way through it. It's like we were told that there was, if there was a lantern, there was a door to the left or something like that. And there was a lantern and there was no door. So we were trying to figure out how to find the door that was there. Because uh, I, I, I remember this room had like a similar door. I mean, I made the rolls, so it's like, there could be more down here. Anyway, I'll just write this down for the future. At the moment, perhaps uh, there's other things to be concerned about. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm also trying to bring up that map and I can't remember exactly where that was. But it doesn't take any very much time to try to unlock, even though the, the locks are actually mostly on the outside, because they do kind of lock it up with a heavy chain on the outside so people don't go wandering the sewers. Uh, it doesn't take you much effort. You find it is, in fact, nighttime now. You're not sure exactly how much time has passed until you check in with someone and find that two weeks have passed since you last left. There does not seem to have been additional attacks on the town, however. And if anything, it's kind of okay. Trade seems to have resumed. The, um, the party is long gone. What do you do about Gosh? Because he does stand out. We could just kill him. No. No, I mean, seriously, we can. We're, like, way stronger than he is. He, he sidles away from, from this talk. Well, he hasn't done anything wrong. He, he that, serves evil. He has that really big, um, sad eye, cow eye kind of look. My response is, so do you. <laughs> Backs away, hands up. Well, we have to make sure he stays around us at all times, because otherwise he probably will get killed, considering uh, the recent invasions. Or he might go and eat babies. He's a monster. There's a, a look from from, uh, from from Gosh, and you can hear inside your head, I do not eat babies. Hush, you. We're not killing him. I mean, he has helped us. He can translate things we can't understand. I've known you for months, and you guys don't trust me. You meet him, and in six hours, you're like best friends? The hell? He's not done anything we... directly to make us not trust him. Yet. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and by the way, we are go we are rescuing Melora first before bringing your god into this world. Just FYI. I mean, we're probably going to need to do a test first, if you want to do that, sure. A test of the portal? I mean, we don't know exactly what we're doing here, so our first try may not be all that uh, successful. I don't know. I've got lots of reading to do. But... Uh, I mean, we could try to get Catherine first and then get Melora, but Melora is probably in the more danger, so... Yeah, she doesn't have one of these charms to protect her. Mm. So what I'm going to do with my downtime, I have now decided, is two weeks of it is going to be trying to decipher the Gaetano papers. Two weeks of it is going to be making a disguise for God. <laughs> <laughs> Cosplay. <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, I because suppose... Because I am proficient in this shit. <laughs> you find out it's actually Fifty Shades of Gaetano. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> boat, boat love. Um, okay, so I just want to make sure... Make a note here. Gosh has come with them. Um, but yeah, as for what to do with them, we, do we try to return him to his homeworld? 
I mean, depending on what it costs us to do a portal, that could be the yeah run there. Yeah, he's definitely not. He's definitely like the bottom of the priority list. <laughs> getting him, getting getting him home. And... Getting him back to Tezakura can be the kind of test run. Hey, there's an idea. So it is night. So you could skulk back to a safe place with Gosh yes, kind of hiding would... in shadows. That would be ideal. <laughs> well, look, you guys want to keep him. You guys got to take care of him. I'm heading home. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the uh, the cloak that we found there and wrap go. him in that for now. Okay. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I didn't one of those items. Wait, did Silas even tell us what the items did? Uh, well, Silas would tell you now, yes. Um, we have three lesser items and three greater items. Uh, we have a circlet of blasting that might make the most sense for Annie since she doesn't have magical blasting abilities normally. Um, we also have a circlet of physical perfection which just makes you really hot for a period. Uh, and you know, the cloak of many fashions. Might work on... Uh... Yeah, that, that's that what could. I was thinking. You guys do if you want to. I want the cloak of many fashions, because this is what I wanted from back when the circus came to town. You wouldn't let me get one. <laughs> you guys can have the other stuff. Well, um, we're going to use it to get him somewhere safe first, and then we'll swap it out with another cloak. Well, no, you, there's the circlet of perfection can make him look human. Oh, okay. So you guys can have that in the circlet of blasting. But doesn't the ring, doesn't the circlet of what race whoever wears it turns into? Or? Well, it is only designed to produce a humanoid perfection. Okay. You're not sure what Gosh seems to be or what it would do to him. Well, there is one way to find out. Yep, plunk it on his head. <laughs> <laughs> um, he looks nervous at first, but he's willing to try, mostly because it looks like it probably will keep him alive. Uh, and at first, the circlet does nothing. It seems kind of awkward and weird, weirdly perched on his strange-shaped head. Then it seems to shrink a little bit, and then he realizes, nope, Gosh is getting taller. Uh, and Gosh suddenly looks like a, a seven-foot-one, blonde-haired human uh, with one eye. Uh, his left eye is missing. It looks as though it's just skin over top. But it looks charming and fashionable on him. Um, it's His clothes are pretty ragged because he doesn't wear a lot of clothes. He's just got these rags on. But he's wearing them well. Silas lets out a side says, I don't want to know. Um, the other three things we have here are a cloak of spider kind. Uh, useful for walking up walls, casting webs once a day. Um, there is a magical longsword uh, of lightning damage. I cannot use a longsword, so you guys can pick between the two of you who wants it. And we have a cube of, uh, basically makes a semi-permeable force field around you. So I don't have a lot of attunement slots left. Um, I am thinking of stopping using my Ring of Mind Shielding just because I've already said that I'm not going to be running away anymore. So, and the purpose of that was to not be found. Yeah, I don't um, so... know about the sword, but the Cloak of Arachnida and the Cube of Force are both attunables. Yeah. So I, I don't would have any be interested in the cloak because mm. being able to climb things when you're a range character. Also poison resistance, which is useless to me. Uh, I don't have any... I, I don't think I'm attuned to anything, so I could take the cube. And also, how long does the circle of... The effect of the circle of perfection, how long does that last? Don't know. Uh, that's a good question. Because um... I have a feeling uh, Akemi is in center stage. It continues until it is removed. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Because yeah. I have a feeling uh, <laughs> there might be uh, it's time. awkwardness. Like, a, I, I have a feeling Gush is going to get into a few awkward situations. 
This circlet must not come off of him unless he leads. I'm in assuming you're doing this still back. down in the sewers because rather than doing this on yeah. the street somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. The moment that Gosh changes and he kind of looks at his own hand with a, a, a look of strong astonishment, um, he looks down into the murky water for his reflection and you see him touching his face um, in, in bewilderment. Um, you can each make an insight roll on that one. Eventually, if I keep making you guys roll them. <laughs> Eventually, someone will get one. <laughs> Okay, so I have insight. plus nine for insight, so I should be good. Oh my god, are you fucking <laughs> shitting me? <laughs> Why? Wow. Not one on both insight rolls today. Jesus Christ. Nice. <laughs> These dice are rigged. And a 13 from Annie. Wow. It's not much That's... I can do with that nat one. No, it's, uh... Silas isn't rolling. He doesn't care. Okay. He's not watching. Silas has one chance. <laughs> it could uh, be information that he could use against Gosh in the future. No, he really doesn't care. Uh, no, you guys continue on with the Gosh thing. Yeah. Annie, I think there's just a lot of astonishment. Um, he's looking at this face and just kind of, so you can, t you can read into what, whatever that, whatever you will. You're not going to get anything special from me, other than the fact that he's completely shocked by it. Are we going to have another chance, like in a future session? Who knows? Maybe something different will change. Because aren't Nothics like former spellcasters who got like two power hungry? You have no idea. So maybe he's like remembering his old face, or right? anyway. <laughs> um. So you've divvy up a bunch of things. You've given Gosh this this uh, circlet. Um, uh. If possible, I'd like to keep the cube because I can't use the longsword. Uh, it's only you two that actually have the training to use it. Am I even proficient with longswords? If you're proficient with warhammers, then you're proficient with longswords because you'd have to have the uh, martial. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Weapon training for that. You're a specific type of cleric. I don't know if it fits any of the ones that are in the book. Um, Where does it even say when, what I'm profession? Okay. Yeah, clerics are not, but some of the subtypes give you martial weapons training. Oh. I mean, uh, I technically am, but it's not a versatile weapon, so I wouldn't, or a finesse weapon, so I wouldn't get yeah. Yeah. Okay, so war domain, which is like. And you can do war domain, yeah, you've got yeah, it. You Proficiency can... with all martial weapons, okay, yeah. Yeah, you, you can yeah. also, I mean, you can also hold on to it. You might have other allies. You can sell it. Right now, it's. I think it does the same damage as your Warhammer, but it's a plus one weapon, and it adds a D4 lightning damage on top of that. Yeah, and it's magic. Yeah. Would Ignis approve of lightning instead of fire, though? Lightning, lightning can cause like fires. Yeah, it does. It's a similar right. domain, yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I can totally take the sword, then. Cool. I don't know if that requires attunement or not. It does not. Okay. Sweet. Um, so, now that Gosh is much more, although he, his clothing, while well, he wears it well, isn't much more than rags. Um, he at least is. I'll, I'll be fixing this in the time off. <laughs> so, we are, approach, we are at 6 o'clock, which is our original uh, wrap time. We can try to do the, uh, the downtime, but it will take probably at least a half an hour. I would say maybe start with this next Okay, we'll session. start with the downtime. Because yeah, I got something time. at 7. <laughs> yep. And that'll give you some guys you guys some time to think about it, as well as uh, to um, to work through your level up, because you will also be leveling up at the end of that downtime. All right. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for, for uh, to holding, holding fort. Uh, I know it's been a long time since we've returned to the real world. Now we get to do all the terrible things that the real world will present upon you. Uh, and you have resources now you can draw upon. Um, and I'll be giving you, I'll be sending out a note about additional resources that essentially you would have accumulated. We haven't really dealt with resources much, but it'll be additional ones you can spend. And I'll try to send you a bit more of a summary of, of how that all works. Um, thank you at home for checking it out. Even the spam bot. I will even say thank <laughs> you to them. Just never come back again. Uh, hey, you can. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, 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 
thing that we have achieved. How, how did the comedian know <laughs> that he'd uh, finally become a success? A better quality of rotten fruit was thrown at them. Uh, <laughs> We, you can uh, you can throw virtual rotten fruit, I guess, at twitch.tv slash ENCIF1. We, we try to stream every couple of weeks. We're back onto our schedule, hopefully on a regular basis now for at least the rest of the year. I have year. no events until, like, April. There we go. So uh, it'll only be the rest of us failing to have the time free to do this. Uh, but hopefully that does not happen. You can also catch up on youtube.com slash ENCIF1. Look for the Legends of the Drowned Dials. That's the master playlist for this and the previous campaign. But you can also look for LOTDI Campaign 2, The Great Confusion. For just this one, you can watch the all previous 72 episodes. Always kind of amazes me how often we've done this so much. Uh, thanks especially, of course, to my players for putting up with everything and coming up with uh, creative solutions for when I make them scared, or at least make their characters scared. Thanks for DMing. That's it for now, folks. See you soon.